International Energy Agency turns 30 this year. Following a period that has seen the fall of communism, the breakup of the Soviet Union, the emergence of China as a major world power, and a new form of war, terrorism. Nowhere has change been swifter or less predictable than in the world of energy. The IEA was born in the wake of the first great oil crisis. Following the 1973 Yom Kippur War in the Middle East, OPEC had unilaterally doubled the price of petroleum. It embargoed exports to the United States and the Netherlands, both accused of being too supportive of Israel. Henry Kissinger, then President Nixon's national security advisor, responded to the oil shock with characteristic energy. He proposed the creation, within the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Paris, of what was quickly dubbed an energy NATO. Among prominent Europeans, two Belgians, Roger Ockrent and Etienne Davignon, spearheaded the effort to turn Kissinger's idea into a reality. On November the 15th, 1974, the OECD Council adopted a decision creating the International Energy Agency. Sixteen member states entered into a binding agreement on an international energy program, the constitution of the fledgling IEA. The core mission would be the maintenance of energy security, notably through the establishment of strategic oil stocks to be shared or put on world markets in the event of a new oil shock. Over the years, the agency, national governments and oil companies have kept the system up to date. Its readiness is frequently tested. Appointed first head of the new agency, was Ulf Lanske, a senior German official. He guided the IEA through its first decade. In 1984, another German, Helga Steg, succeeded Lanske. She had occasion to activate emergency measures in 1991, when oil prices shot up during the early stages of the Gulf War. Member states acted together to put emergency stocks on sale, and prices fell again. In 1995, Robert Priddle from Britain took over and initiated a closer relationship with oil-producing countries. Early in 2003, the Frenchman Claude Mondil succeeded Robert Priddle it was shortly before the US-led coalition invaded Iraq. Since its creation, the IEA has known some chaotic but exhilarating times. By 1976, oil prices were five times as high as in 1973. Sheikh Imani, the Saudi Arabian oil minister, became a household name. But higher oil prices created new production opportunities in new parts of the globe, and OPEC lost market share. In 1979, another steep rise in oil prices following the revolution in Iran led to a recession in the West. In 1989, came the rejection of communism in Eastern and Central Europe. Two years later, the Soviet Union imploded. Membership of the IEA grew to 26 countries. At the same time, China and India became major energy consumers. In March 2003, a US-led coalition invaded Iraq and deposed Saddam Hussein. Thanks to the close cooperation with oil-producing countries and its readiness to use emergency oil stocks, the IEA prevented a supply crisis. Since the 1980s, the 
The IEA has emerged as the authoritative source for world energy statistics. It provides the governments of member countries with analysis and proposals to enable them to develop sound and coherent energy policies. The IEA also works increasingly with non-member countries who ask it to do so. Published each year, the World Energy Outlook has become a reference for governments, producers, analysts and academics. The agency's monthly oil market report is essential reading for all market players. Policy recommendations are developed for all energy sectors and in-depth reviews made of the energy policy of each member country. Agency analysts study every aspect of energy production and use. Efficiency, the liberalization of markets, security of electricity and gas supply, as well as that of oil. The IEA maintains technology agreements with 37 countries. These maximize, through cooperation, the results of research and development. Today, ecological concerns are a major determinant of the energy agenda, especially the problem of climate change. Over three decades, the notion of energy security has taken on a wider meaning and now incorporates the diversification of energy sources to include renewables, in addition to fossil fuels. It encompasses the more efficient use of energy, ensuring the smooth operation of markets. Above all, the environment is an essential component of energy security. Through the IEA, the 26 member countries work to implement the three E's – energy security, environmental protection and economic growth, giving equal importance to each goal.